Welcome to KMET 1490 AM ABC News Radio and the Southern California Business Report, a show dedicated to highlighting successful Southern California businesses and the people behind them with Daryl McCants and Yvette Walker. And now here's Daryl and Yvette. Here's Daryl and Yvette. Thank you for joining us on ABC News and Talk Southern California Business Report, KMET 1490 TV and Radio, with Yvette Walker and myself, Daryl McCants, where we focus on successful Southern California businesses and the people behind them, from awe-inspiring sole proprietors to world-renowned organizations. And uh, we've got a very, very special program for everybody today want to, as customary, Yvette and I would always like to thank our team, Mitch, Bill, and Sean at the station, and our advisory group, Bill Morris, Jay Kaplan, and our new addition in quality control, Diane Cavallo. And uh, Yvette, if you'd be so kind as to give us a uh, nice, beautiful introduction for today's guest, <laughs> by the way, that falls in the category of truly a world-renowned um organization we're going to call it and uh with just an immense number of, of components to it so you take it from here a bit wonderful thank you so much daryl well today i am so privileged to introduce to you mayor paul leon mayor of ontario california mayor paul leon was appointed to the ontario city council in 1998 he was later elected to the City Council in 1999 and re-elected in 2000 and 2004. He served as Mayor Pro Tem from December 2002 until January 2005. Paul was elected to Mayor in a special election in June 2005 and re-elected to four-year terms in November 2006, 2010, 2014, and 2018. Subsequently, he has been mayor for 15 years. In addition to his mayoral duties, Mayor Leon also serves as senior pastor of Hope Chapel Church. Over the years, Mayor Leon has represented Ontario on regional boards with Southern California Association of Governments, SCAG, San Bernardino Association of Governments, SANBAG, and Omnitrans, and has served as the city council liaison to the Los Angeles World Airport's Board of Airport Commissioners. A native of Southern California, Paul is a graduate of Nordoff High School in Ojai, the U.S. Army Security Agency Training Center and School at Fort Devens, Massachusetts, attended Cleveland Institute of Electronics and Next Dimensions Bible College where he was awarded a doctorate in divinity. Thank you so much for joining us today, Paul. Am I really that old? I, all of that stuff that you read off, I don't think one person can do it in a lifetime. I'm kind of surprised. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, uh, anyway, it's good to be with you, and thank you for letting me be a part of the program. I'm, I'm also valiantly trying to join you on Skype, and my computer just doesn't seem to want to be a part. So we'll just go ahead and talk. That's okay. We're going to have you as a repeat offender. You're not off the hook. Absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Okay. Uh, I am getting there, though. So uh, don't give up on me. I am getting there. Okay. All right. Wonderful. Well, so let me just ask you, in your mayoral hat, in, in the time that you have served, 15 years is a very long time to serve as a mayor, in my view. Um, what would you say is your favorite part of being a mayor so far? You know, I've been asked that so many times, I know the answer without even thinking. The, the best thing is when I'm um, engaging with people in the community, and especially kids. I, I mean, I could go on and on about, you know, who's having the opportunity to meet um, um, political people and celebrities and the perks of the job, but they don't matter to me anymore. What matters to me is when I'm personally being effective in the life of somebody, uh, especially a young person or, or a, a family, and being able to have the ability to help, um, that's, that's really what uh, floats my boat these days. 
Mm-hmm. That's amazing. And that's yeah. wonderful. Yes. We, that's we wonderful. Had, we, we had, uh, Yvette and I had the pleasure of, of uh, having a little discussion before bringing the mayor on today. And uh, big picture, as I'm very familiar, and Yvette is as well, we are excited about everything from San Luis Obispo to San Diego and uh, the amazing region that we're in here in Southern California. And I, uh, I confided with uh, Mayor Leon yesterday that, uh, in my opinion, uh, Ontario, <laughs> California is one of, because Yvette and I are always looking for secrets, and I think it's probably one of the most <laughs> amazing secrets of Southern California, period, full stop. Uh, we have the two biggest ports in the nation that are seamlessly working with Ontario. Uh, what we learned recently from Mark Thorpe, the CEO of Ontario International Airport, about he is so impressed with what the city has done in setting up amazing access to the International Airport from north, south, east, and west. Um, It's a beautiful, beautiful city. Convention centers are new. Hotels are new. The arena is new. Uh, Every city west of the Mississippi wanted the, the mills uh, uh, shopping center that just keeps growing and growing and growing and uh, you know and I think Paul when we talk about the people behind these amazing organizations you're clearly an example of, 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 of that individual that we're speaking of and I know you're going to jump and say it's a team of people and so forth but I'm going to put you back in the box you know you're doing it for the right reason you obviously care I'm in Ontario all the time and the, the residents there know that, that you and, and your counterparts care about them individually you've kept the texture of the city so we try to get secrets you know and you just gave us one in the first 10 seconds which is you care about the people and that comes through what else is coming up what you know is there something you can share that's public record that a lot of people don't know about anything upcoming uh you know it's it's always nice to to get the positivity out there and, yeah, and, and let people know what's going on in Ontario. It's just a, an amazing engine of Southern California. Well, that's right kind of you. <laughs> uh, I'm glad that you're impressed. I was talking to uh, one of my council members, Alan Wapner, yesterday we were having a conversation and uh, we're reflecting on how long we've been involved. In, you know, he's 26 years, me 22 years. And the difference that we have seen ourselves from then to now. And, um, of course, people don't typically see it. And it's like the aging process. You don't see the changes unless you were absent for a while and then come back or or something. And uh, for the most part, a lot of people in the city of Ontario have a hard time seeing the changes, but because we were part of the plan on, on making those changes from the things that were to the things that are, it's, um, it was just amazing. We, we, we don't really think in terms of that. We don't think about it all the time, but I'm glad that you see it. So thank you. Yeah. Well, I've been watching it for many decades actually. And, and, you know, you (laughs) mentioned planning, people don't plan to fail. They fail to plan. And, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, it's, uh, it, you, you, Ontario is really one of, the most amazing things we got going in Southern California. Again, the airport was talking about all the jobs that have been created, all the planning to make sure that the the logistics piece is, is up and running and the residential piece and the historic downtown. And, uh, you know, I, I will be shocked if, uh, uh, well, I think you, you mentioned already about the awards that, that you have recently uh, secured for the city. Can you, Talk a little bit about that now, about uh, how many years ago you started that process, and let's just start with that piece of great news, because I think everybody's going to really enjoy that yeah. that uh, that story in total. Uh, I, I just believe that um, when we think in terms of anything that is funded by the government, it is, uh, you have to remember that. They, uh, money comes rolling down the hill, and you better be prepared to catch it, uh, or it's or you're not going to get it. 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 <laughs> I think we. Hello. Yep, you're with us, Dave. 
boy, something happened. All of a sudden, my computer came on. I was Skype. I saw both of you, and I, it was like this uh, reverberation, and that was that. Anyway, I'll just leave that alone. We'll just talk on, on the phone. Yeah, I like your so, hat. That was uh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> so you saw me, too. Darn. Yeah, you blinked, we up, on the, yeah, you blinked up on the screen for a minute. I don't know what happened. So okay, it, so it, you're, you were saying when the say, government so. is, is, is pushing yeah. money out, you have to be there with your catcher's mitt ready to catch it. That's what yes. we left off. Exactly. We call it shelf-ready. You better have a shelf-ready project. But most people don't. Most cities and most uh, or, uh, government um, entities don't even think about that. Well, about in 2004, we, uh, together with uh, the then mayor, uh, my dear friend Gary Ovitt, and um, some other people in the community, uh, but especially this, uh, this very vibrant and uh, uh, excited and energetic young uh, uh, health specialist going to college, uh, Dora Barilla, <clears throat> decided that it was in her head. She said, hey, how come? Why is it that... Um, uh, some communities are healthy and some are not. And what's the difference? What makes the difference? Why are some cities geared towards health and others are not? Who makes that decision and why is that so? And, and of course, we ran into all of the people who didn't, either they didn't want to answer the question, didn't know the answer to the question, or, or just had never thought of the question. And so she was always saying, well, we need to engage them in the conversation, then change the conversation, then change the way people think. <laughs> and, you know, this is coming from this young lady in college back in, you know, 18 years ago, 20, uh, 16 years ago. So uh, we, we started really um, looking at that and wondering why certain cities are that advantageous over others. And we thought that Ontario certainly had pockets of areas that were not healthy. They were uh, food deserts, and uh, they had all of the things that uh, contribute to crime and uh, other negative aspects of life. And we thought we found the answer. So we wrote a book. It was called Healthy Cities. Dora wrote it, basically. Gary and I funded a lot of it, and other people were involved, like I said, but we were the main trio. And um, we shopped it around, and the funny thing is, even in my own city, there was a resistance to it. And a lot of that had to do with the fact that I was, um, um, I, I, you know, it was me <laughs> trying to do it because everything is political. So uh, anyway, uh, uh, other cities started to adopt it. The CDC wanted to see it. We went, we went back there. We got awarded. We, we were awarded in, in Washington D.C. for the for the, the findings. And and there's just some pillars of thought that have to come around to create a healthy community. And and it isn't in parks and rec it isn't about walking and eating right it's in development it's how you develop your city to be healthy um if you if you just develop another concrete jungle you just developed an unhealthy community if you allow a fast food restaurant on all four corners you just continue the food desert if you allow people to build nothing but you know grocery stores you know, many, many miles away and infill the rest with what we call stop and robs, uh, which are little, little stores that uh, you can, you, you, the, the mom gives them two bucks to the kids, you know, buy some lunch on the way to school and they stop in the stop and rob and what's in there? Nothing but beer, chips and, and Cokes and candy uh, and cigarettes. Well, how, how's a child going to be nutritionally developing with that? So you have to plan in your city to make sure that all of those negative elements don't combine in your community to create an unhealthy environment. And when you look at some city, you look at like Laguna Niguel or you look at uh, um, Dana Point or, or, or even um, uh, Carmel, and we went and we visited different cities, and even my hometown of Ojai, California, I didn't understand I was growing up in a healthy community. They don't allow that kind of stuff. They just don't allow it. And somebody at the top level of government says to themselves, and then it becomes part of their culture of the community, well, that's not who we are and that's not what we allow. We only allow healthy kind of stuff. So it, it, it's maybe a little bit hard to explain, but uh, before the city of Ontario adopted it, as crazy as it is, the county of San Bernardino adopted it, Montana, Ranch Cunamonga, then everybody was adopting the Healthy Cities book. And then they misunderstood it. <laughs> they were like, you know, passing out pedometers and saying, eat green apples. And it's like, you didn't read the book. Uh, but uh, <laughs> anyway, when, 
when when uh, the uh, the uh, state of California, you know, started to really focus on uh, carbon footprint and uh, global warming, warming and all of these things, they said, well, there have to be some ways that we can positively affect some communities as a demonstration on how to create a healthy environment. Now, they're looking at uh, uh, what they decided what were called trans, uh, uh, transitional carbon communities. So you're getting away from the carbon footprint. But our Healthy Cities book is that, just by its nature. So when they were handing out $35 million grants at the state, they had four of them. Well, we applied. And not only did we get the grant, we were, we were the top applicants i went to the to the uh when they when they decided to give it away there were there were 20 other cities there with their hands out saying me 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 and uh when they called on ontario we just gave the really fast presentation and they said okay you guys get it watts gets it fresno gets it two communities you guys know what to do um the rest of you come back some other time and ontario is the number one applicant and congratulations. We want, and we want yes, that congratulations. million. That, that, is, uh, yeah. that is a very awe-inspiring, world-renowned organization. I love that. <laughs> that's, uh, that's great. Alan. So, no, on, on, and on behalf of the 25 million people that uh, live in Southern California, thanks for uh, representing us so well back there and, uh, and, and thinking ahead, as the old saying goes. So what happened mm-hmm. next after you grabbed that award? Did... Uh, did you start having well, other did, cities contact you and, and try to get more details on it? No. Um, uh, actually, most of the time, uh, political leaders, and I think it's to their sh- own chagrin, always want to reinvent the wheel or build a better mousetrap. And there are a few cities that come and say, if any that I know of, that come and say, hey, how did you do that? And, uh, and and that also the grant process is at, at the state and federal level oftentimes are asking for a new fighter jet. You know, the old one isn't any good. We want something that's going to do a little bit better. So you see that the design always needs to be different. Uh, and, and, and sometimes that prevails more than anything else. So I don't get a lot of requests, but we've been, I've been requested on different shows like this to talk about it and, and discuss, you know, how did we achieve it? Uh, but we, you know, we don't, we don't stick with one thing. We are, we are really all over the map when it comes to development and futurism. I mean, we were, we were the first of two cities in California to get federal grants to transform our city life. And, and that's, a, there's a reason I say it like that. Our city lights to LED. Hmm. And, and, so the street lights on your street, there's two types of street lights. When you see them over the nicely designed pole and everything else, that's a city light. When you see them on the telephone pole, that's an Edison light. And for many, many years, Southern California was covered by these, these yellow uh, street lights. Everybody used them. They were, but they're high intensity use. You know, they're three or 400 watt um, high intensity light bulbs up there. Usually, uh, and so uh, an LED, on the other hand, will use 40 watts and give you the same amount of white light. Right. And uh, but the trans, you know, transforming from the old technology to the new technology is going to it's going to take some money. So um, I was beaten on the door of of our council and city manager that hey 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 hey, make sure <laughs> you see this coming along, jump right on it. So we did, and LA did. And we both were uh, granted the money that we did about a quarter of our city, and and which included pretty much all of our major arteries and some of the inner city. And uh, Los Angeles was able to do a much larger area. They got a larger grant, of course, and they also included you know some of those major arteries that have big bridges and stuff. So it made a significant difference. You could see overnight going from a yellow light to a very very bright white light that took you know, a third of the power. And so we were all 
sitting fat and happy, and then I said, well, I'm looking at the warrant register, which is the uh, the city's bills, right? He got a big old thick book of bills from the month. And I said, the Edison bill hasn't changed. Oh, really? So it took us six months to deal with Edison to give us the discount <laughs> for the difference in price on the usage of the electricity because... They sell in bundles. They don't sell in individual use. And we said, well, well, the reason we do this is to save energy. Which, so right. that was something else we had to start. That's, That's hilarious. Start. So you're, you, you it, cut your electric <laughs> use by 3x, and the bill mm -hmm. went down by 0x. That's right. <laughs> That and I think that's that's what makes uh, your leadership so unique to Ontario and and the way that you run it, you know, the way you're looking to cut costs, the way you're looking to be efficient, the way you're looking to create a healthy community. And, and with that, we also know that there's a large economic portion that contributes to creating a healthy community and, and the planning behind it. Um, can you talk a little bit about the different sectors within Ontario that contribute to that growing economy within your city? Well, people misunderstand how a city is funded. And I wish you to get, I wish that uh, your election plans had worked out, Yvette, because you would be great at this. <laughs> um, people think that television tells the story. And I don't mean the news, I mean movies and television. And they think that cities are run almost like small little fascist governments. And they think that the mayor is like the mayor on TV and it, he tells everybody to move and everyone moves. And that might work in China. It doesn't work here. It's not even real here. And um, uh, the other thing is that we don't live off of uh, property taxes. The property taxes were hauled away by the state many years ago. The state kept digging into our property taxes, and so we hardly get anything anymore for property taxes. Someone one time told me, you know, I pay your salary. And I said, you do? And they said, yeah, I pay my <laughs> property taxes. And I said, well, then give me a raise. I, you know, you're not paying me enough for what I do. <laughs> but I said, your, your, your property tax, really, your property tax is gone as soon as a, a, a firefighter drives by or a police officer deals with your neighbor because that cost ate his cost and your cost and anyone whatever, you know, it's a high cost. We don't get very much for property tax. So cities have to be very creative in how they, they fund themselves. And there's basically you have development fees, you have parking fees, you have hotel taxes. So you have development taxes parking taxes, hotel taxes, um, and, and retail taxes. You have to have all of those things going. And there are a lot of times people think, well, you know, your grocery store is doing great. Well, yeah, but groceries don't provide, there's no tax on food. So even when you have a super Walmart like we do, it's better than nothing, but a lot of that is food. So the food, uh, is, uh, is that's, that doesn't pay us either. So we have to be very creative in how we divvy up the city and recognize that for a projected population in the 300,000 and maybe 10 to 15 years, we better have the jobs and the income. All of those people need jobs, and all of those people's neighborhoods are going to be needed to be taken care of. And all of the city staff is going to have to be there to support them, and they're going to be expecting all of the, the same types of um, amenities that they had when they moved into town, just like you said, I remember then and I know it now. So we have to be very prepared to balance the city's development so that there are enough jobs in our community, but also enough tax um, generating businesses. Yeah, and when, when we Excellent. do that... that and that makes so much sense. Uh, I'm sorry, a bit. Uh, we're going to be no. going to a break here. When we get back from break, I, I have a, a couple of classic questions for you to, to build on that. And I know Yvette does too. And 
you know, it's all about jobs, 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 and no one's done a better job than Ontario at staying focused on that. We will be right back after the break. Mayor Leon, City Mayor of City of Ontario. We'll be right back. My mom is a breast cancer survivor. The United Breast Cancer Foundation saved her life. Their free breast cancer exam caught the cancer early, and that saved her life. But now the foundation needs your help so they can continue offering free or low-cost breast screening exams, saving more women's lives. Help them by donating your car, whether it's running or not. They'll provide fast, free 24-hour pickup, and you receive a charitable tax deduction, plus the great feeling you'll get knowing your donated car is going to help save more lives. Just call 800-781-0965 to set the wheels in motion. They take cars, trucks, vans, and SUVs, running or not. Call 800-781-0965. The United Breast Cancer Foundation needs your help, and your donation could literally save women's lives, helping them catch breast cancer early, like they did with my mom. Donate today, 800-781-0965. That's 800-781-0965. Your Pharmacy and Mobility Solutions now has Pack Your Meds. That's right, just add water. You order five or more prescriptions from Your Pharmacy and Mobility Solutions, and they will pack your meds for you in AMPM Mark Packs. No more sitting down and counting and dropping them on the floor. You remember, it's not fun. I didn't like it. So now, they'll do it for you. Safe, sealed, and dated. So call Your Pharmacy and Mobility Solutions at 951-845-8252. Take KMET 1490 AM with you everywhere you go by downloading our free smartphone apps found on the KMET website, KMET1490AM.com. You can also go to the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store on your phone to download the free app. Now you can listen live or play any of your favorite programmer's podcasts using your smartphone. Don't miss out on the free KMET smartphone apps. Go to KMET1490AM.com and download your free phone app today. Hello listeners, this is Christopher from The Christopher Show. Hey, if you miss one of our shows here at KMET, don't worry about it. You can go to our webpage, and that's KMET1490AM.com. Go to the homepage, click on the SoundCloud tab, and hear any show anytime you want. Join Daryl McCants and Yvette Walker every Tuesday at 3 p.m. on ABC News Radio, KMET 1490 AM, and on the internet at KMET TV for the Southern California Business Report. The show is dedicated to highlighting successful businesses and the individuals behind them. Daryl and Yvette interview the incredible people managing these enterprises that range from awe-inspiring sole proprietors to world-renowned organizations. The Southern California Business Report, Tuesdays at 3 p.m. on KMET AM and on the internet at KMET TV. Welcome back to ABC News and Talk, Southern California Business Report. We are here, Yvette Walker and I are delighted to have the mayor of the city of Ontario, Mayor Paul Leon. And uh, Mayor, can you hear us clearly? I got you. Good, good. While we were at break, so everybody knows, we, we made another attempt at uh, at uh, relying on uh, some, some technology and... Uh, so we still have a nice clear connection. So we're doing we're doing great. So when we left off, we were talking about jobs, and uh, and uh, again when we had uh, Mr. Mark Thorpe, the CEO of Ontario International Airport, he was bragging about the city of Ontario and the tremendous amount of jobs 
that uh, have been created for Ontario and the surrounding areas and the all the amazing things going on with logistics and forward thinking and they're they're considering where they'll have huge drones and different things out there that are you know not even on other people's radar yet the uh, the fact that uh, the the airport along with your group there the the city and others at the county and state level now have the only area in uh, the west coast I think of it where the new uh, vaccine can be sent because you have the proper uh, facilities in the city so so much to be proud of when it comes to the city of Ontario and as I said I've been watching it for decades and I was uh, uh, born in LA when LA was a, a big engine of manufacturing and aerospace and the the movie industry and all this and and as we uh, talked with uh, uh, with Mr. Mark Thorpe, he said, you know, it's just the vision of Ontario. So much of that now is being moved out here where there's more space and the the third largest group of millennials in the country live in the in the region and and uh, and so forth. So. On the subject of jobs, you started to talk about that before we went to break. Uh, anything new and exciting that's just really caught your attention? Obviously, uh, you and, and your team there has attracted. I can't even think of a company that you haven't attracted. We got the new Porsche dealership and the new Audi dealership and the the planes, trains, and airplanes. And it's just amazing what's going in and out of Ontario. But uh, anything you'd like to share with the listeners that uh, has caught your attention in, in uh, recent moments? Be like something new that's coming to town. <laughs> that just got here or it's about to come. Yvette well, and I love secrets, so, so share some secrets yeah. if there are any. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't really know if there's any real secret. Our real issues right now are, are not uh, the incoming businesses. As often as you hear about businesses that are leaving California, and I think that that's uh, certainly uh, something that needs to be reckoned with, when you see Oracle and Tesla and you name it saying they're leaving to Texas and that uh, California is a terrible place to try to do business, well, and I think that's absolutely true unless you're in Ontario because we try to undo a lot of the nonsense that has come down the pike through the state. So we see a lot of businesses that want to be here. You know, we are now the west hub of Amazon, FedEx, um, UPS at the airport. We have different airlines. We just had the announcement that Hawaiian Airlines will be starting a nonstop to Honolulu out of our airport um, in the in the first week of January. So there are still many businesses that want to come here because we have the nexus of the airport, which is a big hub of commerce. I don't care where you are when you there was a port in history, whether it was a seaport or a cross in the desert or a, uh, a riverboat port. That's where business was. People, you know, I'm a minister. People always ask me, well, why did Jesus teach in Capernaum? Well, it's because it was a port at the top of the Sea of Galilee. That's where people were, you know. He wasn't going to go preach in the desert. He preached where the people were. So um, that, that, that's what happens um, in, in any port. Uh, so we have an airport, but we also have three major, uh, we have an intersection of three major freeways, which are truck ports, if you will. And uh, so we have all of this going for us. Many businesses still want to get to Ontario, the, the price of, of either the facility or the dirt, dirt is scarce, but the price of dirt, if it isn't, if you can find it, is sky high. Uh, but that's because we are where everything is. We even have a railway, right? Two of them run through town. So if it can be moved, it can be moved in and out of Ontario very efficiently. So that brings also with it the future of executive level uh, staffing to run all of these businesses that are trying to be at the center of where everything is, which is here. And they might land yep. in the region. They might land in Ranch Cucamonga. They might land in, the, you know, Chino or, or something or Eastdale. But, and that's okay. But uh, the closer they are to the center of all things is Ontario. So it, it, it makes us 
the ones who have the, the gold dirt. And uh, that in itself uh, allows us to be able to build an arena, a professional arena, where entertainment, because the people who have that kind of expendable income and that kind of lifestyle will want to be near high-end and quality entertainment. One of those, those businesses will want to have a, um, a, a, a convention center. They'll want to have an airport nearby. They'll want to have, you know, we have, we boast the largest indoor shopping center in the western United States called the Ontario Mills. It's been there for years, and it's been out doing everybody's mall in the country for many, many years. So we, we have a lot of things that are going on for us, even uh, without mentioning anything necessarily new that's coming. Now, I'll tell you, there's a hotel that's looking to be built. Uh, I've seen the plans for a five-star hotel. I can't tell you where it's going to be, but it's going to be built. That we don't have great. anything oh, like that wow. in the whole region. You know, and, and, that is uh, remarkable. A, a, tip, a tip of the hat to you, and the fact that the two uh, world-renowned ports, Long Beach and San Pedro, are using rail to get the merchandise straight to Ontario. So I, I think that you have, uh, along with your airport and your truck port, I think you got a rail port. So, so I, yeah, I like your, yeah, uh, I like your port uh, description. That's, uh, that's spot on. So a, a five-star hotel is coming in town, and uh, now do you have free coupons that you can share with uh, Yvette and I for this, uh, in case we're going to take a run out? Now, kind of switching well, gears, to get, I, I want to give you a little tip of hat because, you know, you, you, you started the show by talking about how you care about the people who live in Ontario, and uh, because I've been driving through it for, you know, uh, many decades without giving my age, and uh, I'm, I'm amazed at, you know, everything from Graper Olives to the beautiful Euclid Avenue that you guys have not tried to turn it into something, um, you know, uh, you know, awkward. You kept that beautiful, original um, culture in the city, you know, whether you're going to Gloria's to, to enjoy a, a beautiful meal or as I said, taking a tour of Graber Olives or seeing all the historic neighborhoods and the new structures that you put into town beautifully complement all the original structures, whether it's the, um, it may be the only law school in the county. I could be wrong, but, uh, and I, I've heard recently it's an ABA law school now, which uh, uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong on that, but uh, that is right adjacent to City Hall. It's just a, uh, Amazing what you guys have done in Ontario. So just the tip of the hat, and since it's Christmas time, uh, Yvette and I would be uh, would be uh, remiss if we didn't say how much we love all the decor that uh, you, you know just uh, beautiful, just just a really authentic, so much uh, charm and originality to it. So not trying to turn it into something that it's not. Just a very humble, beautiful city. That's the plan. Well, we have a we have a um, an issue, and people. Once again, it's uh, just just living. I, I remember how this was um, back before the mid nineties. I really had zero pulse on politics. Although um, I joined the army when I was sixteen years old. Can you believe that? I did, and my mom was like, "Yeah, I'll sign for him to go." to get your mom's signature and she was like is the pen's not in my hand yet so um uh i joined when i was 16 years old so i was in from 1973 until 1977 and um i served in the uh i was in the army and i was in the army security agency and i i ended up becoming a intelligence analyst and a general staff briefer so everybody used to call me the U.S. News and World Report. <laughs> I had to know I everything. You're a natural for our show. You will be a repeat offender if you can yes. make that happen. Yes. I had, and, and, I had to do all this stuff. But I, you know, I, I certainly I was paying attention to the politics of the day and, uh, the, and certainly international politics and, and uh, going through the presidencies of Ford, Carter, 
and then Reagan came up pretty quickly when I was out. But other than that, you know, that's about the, the, the highlight. I just knew that kind of stuff. But when I got back home and started working for a living and, and doing stuff, all everything like that disappeared. I, I, it, 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 who was in power meant nothing to me. And what really meant nothing to me was who was the mayor of my city. I didn't know. I didn't care. Well, now I know that in reality, the mayor is the the mayor and city council are the most important elected officials in your life, right next to the school board. All of these people Absolutely. are elected, and they they control more of, of you than anything you know. And you know the least about them. You're more worried about the president. And I, I, I tell you, if you're if you water doesn't get to your house when you turn on the faucet. Call the president. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. We'll see what yeah. happens there, right, Mayor? Um, so yeah. all of that military training, uh, the strategical aspect, all of that has served you so well in your leadership position as, you know, serving for o- over 15 years as the leader in the, as a mayor for the city. And it's just been a phenomenal uh, asset to to the entire community, and they're so fortunate to have you. And with that said, um, part of that strategy included pursuing uh, the taking over of the airport. So, um, for those listeners that don't really understand what exactly that means or why that's important, can you please um, expand on that and the benefits that it has for the city of Ontario? Well, it's simple. Let's just put it this way. If you can undo your competition by buying them out and closing them down, pretty good job, pretty good deal, huh? Absolutely. And that's what LA had done. They had uh, taken us over. They, they were buying up airports. They had, you know, they had four airports under their wing. Uh, excuse the pun. And uh, they were making sure that none of us could grow while they took all of the business. And even though by just just by population we were growing before the boom, before the uh, downturn of two thousand eight, we were growing every year. And then the uh, the economy dropped, and then they did everything they could to shut us down because as people stopped flying, well, they needed every flight they could get, and the best way to do it is to shut us down, which they owned us. When we started seeing that, the economy here. Is, is positively or negatively affected by the success of our airport, just like I gave you a little bit ago the, 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 uh, the truth about ports. <laughs> so yep. uh, right. everything, everything surrounds the, the economy of where people congregate, and ports create that. So we had to go toe-to-toe. We actually uh, we, we defeated the people who said it's impossible. We did the impossible task. We took back our airport. And by doing that, well, they were always saying, well, nobody wants to be there. No airlines want to go there. Da, 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 da. Well, the reality was they were lying. And because we, we ended up growing, as soon as we got it back, we started growing again. And if it hadn't been for COVID, we were really on in, on in flight, if you would. They also had just like a place to deteriorate. Who wanted to go there? They were closing. They didn't fix anything. They just closed it down. The bath, if the toilet broke, yeah, they just closed the door. Well, we just found so, out uh, in spite of COVID-19 uh, the Ontario airport is the fastest growing airport in its category in the country. So it's, it sure uh, it's bouncing it a lot. back uh, much faster. So the, uh, the region is still enjoying it and, uh, and it's, uh, and it's still a port, a healthy port right along with the mm-hmm. rail port and the, uh, truck port. <laughs> the truck port. Yeah. I Car love port. it. That is, we'll be well, using yeah. that. That is, uh, that's rich. Yeah. So, <laughs> Anything else, uh, Mayor, you'd like to say about the airport uh, since the city has taken it back? It's just, it's 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 been uh, it's been a real positive from start to, to current. Well, I will say that the two council members that we have over there running the place, Alan Watmer and Jim Bowman, are doing a heck of a job. And uh, Alan's the kind of guy who looks at every detail. Uh, he has a magnifying glass on everything. I mean, I'm support. I don't think he gets COVID because he's got a magnifying glass looking out for it coming at him. <laughs> <laughs> but um, 
That's you phenomenal, and it's uh, very great to have a team uh, around you that shares the vision and um, the intensity and the seriousness of running all of these very, very important facets of uh, the City of Ontario in such a way that is going to benefit its residents, not only for today, but for generations to come, the way everything is being mapped out. Um, and that's exactly what any community needs in a leader. And so switching gears now, um, I uh, understand that you guys have uh, are working on something called the Ontario Ranch. Can you tell us about that? And what is the vision for this growing area of Ontario? Well, obviously it will be a high end uh, mixed use development of 13 square miles or 8,000 square miles acres 8,000 acres wow. and 13 square miles it'll up our population to probably another hundred thousand people but it'll also create more jobs uh, hardly ever is the person out there who hasn't studied a lot that will criticize and say we don't we want it to be this we want it to be that but what they don't understand is that there were development plans put in place we also have requirements by the state you know, for affordable housing and such things so we have to be, and and a quota for how many units we have to build. Can you believe that? We, we can't just say, you know, we're going to cap it at 200,000 and, and then this right. building, the state says, no, you have to build homes. You must build homes. <laughs> right. So, you know, yes. so we have to. So how do we do that? How do we manage that? How do we make it all fit? That's what we take under task. We need to have the right schools. We have to have the, 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 we have, to have the fire stations in place. We have to have the parks in place. We have to have everything in place, including one of the things that I don't like about this whole region is that, although the Chiefy brothers are, are mythical in, in, in history here, uh, and they laid everything out nice, but they laid everything out nice for a world of the 1800s. Um, the streets aren't <laughs> wide enough. There's no, there's no undergrounding. Uh, all of the water that hits the ground in Rancho Cucamonga and runs in and then comes out of the ground at the, the, the border of North Ontario and Cucamonga and upland all the same it comes out and it's on our streets and so the infrastructure is really really poor uh, uh because of the way things were developed and back then they, they just believed that streets could double as um drainage ditches well <laughs> and they did if you if you live here long enough and go back in time Rancho Cucamonga actually had streets that had really high gut, uh, uh curves in order to handle the water that went down there so uh, we're catching all that today and trying to divert it. But the other thing is that we also now know that we can't just let it run into the de into the ocean. So we're capturing it in ponds, which we're doing a much better uh, job of. But we're also asking developers to use permeable uh, soils and, and, and stru substructures to catch the water underneath their huge buildings and parking lots. So it doesn't run away. It just percolates back into right. our underground uh, uh, water aquifer, and so we've done a good job of that. I think the major thing, and I'll, and I'll, I'll get back, give it back to you, is how do we seamlessly incorporate the new modern Ontario ranch into the 175-year-old Ontario center city? That's the big thing, and, and a lot of times people say in the center of the city they got everything. They got, I got City Hall, they got the concerts, they got this, and look what's down here, the new... We only have all of the new. We have fiber optics. We have internet for sixty bucks a month for a gig. We have you know we have all kinds of great amenities, great great drainage, great parks, great this and that. But they want some of the old, and the old want some of the new. So our big thing is how do we um, how do we get it all into the same pot, mix it up, and make everybody happy? And we're doing a, a lot to make sure that 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 the seam works down and works up. And, uh, and and it's, uh, it's a challenge, but I think we're getting there. And that all of the different aspects of community are separated correctly so that you have, you know, it all put together as a puzzle so that people don't live in between, uh, for instance, uh, industrial buildings. So industrial building uh, centers, oh, and then some single-family housing. That doesn't work. Right. So we seg segregated out. And we're doing our best. Uh, we actually we're doing an excellent job. Not just our best. We're doing an excellent job of making sure that the, the the design that we had is working. We set up a design twenty years ago. We tweak it every now and again, but for the most part, it's working. Yeah. Well, we we got another secret here, uh, Yvette. 
one of the secrets I can see very loud and clear, uh, the city of Ontario has one incredible mayor. It's neat yes. that you guys, uh, that with your leadership and your, your team there in the city council, and you know, the old saying is all politics are local politics. And I like mm-hmm. your one liner. If your water doesn't work, you know, call the <laughs> DC. You're, you're in big trouble. But uh, no, it's, mm-hmm. it's, uh, it's, it's, it's absolutely the truth. And the fact that you have a plan and, uh, and I've watched the plan, you know, firsthand, you know, I, I was, uh, born in LA and, and, uh, you know, and I've, I've been in every city in Southern California, just about, by the way, next time you do a trip up to, uh, uh, Carmel, let Yvette Walker and I know, cause we want to join you. Uh, you're absolutely right. It's just a beautiful city, but, uh, I'm you can Ohio. see that all Those those elements are, are very present in Ontario. The yeah. way you've mixed the old with the new, and uh, just really trying to be very thoughtful and just to have everything laid out. Where, as they said, the airport, you know, the warehouses are over there. The trucks are coming in through this direction. The passenger vehicles this direction. Euclid Avenue. You guys know exactly what it is and how to bring it to its highest and best use and maximize each little part of the city and uh, all the new home developments uh, beautifully laid out so you know again a tip of the hat we're getting down close to the bottom of the hour Yvette do you have any final questions for the mayor before we uh, before we have him off the hot seat well uh, now that we're closing if you could just give us a very brief your number one top goal for the residents of Ontario for 2021 what would that be for 22 years, I've heard people lamenting about our downtown. Our downtown was vacated when the Montclair Plaza opened in 1968. Penny Sears, Pet Boys, Newberries, everybody jumped ship and went down there and left us with a ghost town. The ghost town has been something that was a problem for when I first started. But you know what? It's pretty much turned around now. But the, the next big thing is that we're building a four-story, well, with a developer with our partnership, for, between uh, the uh, D, C block and D block, we're building a uh, our, 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 our D and E. We're, bu- we're, bu- we're building a four story um, new development, multi use, uh, residential upstairs, commercial downstairs, parking structures, everything uh, right there Beautiful. on Euclid. Well, we're going to have you come back to talk about it because we're we just ran out of time. You 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 teased us with that. We're going to come back and do another hour on the downtown, if that's okay with you. Absolutely. I'd love to do it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks for joining the Southern California Business Report. All right. God bless you guys. This has been the Southern California Business Report with Daryl McCants and Yvette Walker on KMET 1490 AM ABC News Radio, a show dedicated to highlighting successful Southern California businesses and the people behind them. Log on to the show's website and remember to visit the podcast page.